Good day everyone. Oh, that sun's bright. Um, yeah, so got a bit of a video just on what we're doing with cattle, especially around wintering. Um, yeah, we're just pearl. Just finished tailing oh, a couple of days ago, so getting some stock shifted around, and uh, that'll be in an upcoming video. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy this, and let me know what you think. Giving this old girl a bit of attention this morning. I uh, checked the level on there the other day, and she's she's got plenty in it, but it's a wee bit low. It's down to about there. So the pinion seal on this axle, when all the trans work got done, the mechanic that did it replaced, and uh, yeah, it leaks. Typical. Um, Bill has been told they don't seem to care, so yeah. Um, when I checked that it looked a wee bit dirty, so I thought, oh, I'll just drop it out. It's done about 600 hours. No, it hasn't. Is it? Yeah, I would have done 600. Well, oh, that didn't look too bad. It's a front axle. There's a wee bit of metal on there, but nothing too serious. There's literally kilos of it in there, but uh, that oil is dirty. And there is a little bit of a shimmer there that I'm not too keen on. We'll let it drain out and then we'll see what sort of settles. But uh, yeah, we might have something wrong in there. I can tell you right now, it won't be going back to the dealer to get fixed. Right, so we just put one pump, which is like 100 mils of clean oil in there. And it's, it's running clean. Might not look it on the camera, there you go. Get the sunlight out, it looks pretty good. That doesn't look so good, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later. So there's the bottom bung in. Now, uh, these pumps, this is an Allen Lube one, I'm sure there's lots of different brands. Um, they are quite slow, but I really do rate them, eh? Just going to straighten the filler plug there, clean and tidy. I'm sure you can get bigger ones. Um, we're going to start buying our oil in 200 litre or 44 gallon drums. And I'm sure from them you can get a a pump that pumps a little bit more each stroke but I think it's about 200 mils of pump so about 40 pumps should fill this up but I'm not going to expect you guys to watch all 40 pumps 69 pumps what a number eh I would battle like that right so there's the bottom of our pan um, there's lots of wee specks of dirt in there which I don't think have come from the axle I think they've got in from the bungs there's a definite shimmer Try and get that round so you can see it in the sun. There's a definite shimmer in the oil there. Hang on. Let's try this. Um, I mean, it's a differential. There's there's lots of moving parts in there, and there's always a little bit of metal getting shed. I'm not too worried about that, but the colour of that oil is quite concerning to me. The the, the darkness of it. Um, yeah, we might start changing this a bit more often. I think. And you're on that note, it actually took <laughs> yeah, um, about 14 litres of oil, not 8. Takes a bit more than I thought. Um, yeah, so it's a wee bit expensive changing that too often, but uh, I want to monitor that because I don't want it flying a bits on me if we can get it fixed before it gets too bad. I don't think it's at that stage now, but uh, whether it's bearings, whether it's crown wheel and pinion, whether it's the actual diff in the middle, I'm not too sure. Still got it to these bad boys too. Um, these are the biggest selling point of case New Holland gear. They are huge. Come around this side. A bit more room here. Put your hand on that. That's a 150 horsepower tractor. That is massive. And they do not cause trouble. They are bloody awesome. Same size hub as is on our big girl, the T7. Um, they're a wee bit deeper that way because they've got the brakes in them. But other than that, gears inside and everything are identical and they're just they're bloody bulletproof. Right, got these cattle behind me here. They're uh, a few days, maybe, oh, what are we today, the 27th, so I'm going to say another five or six days these guys might be coming out of here. They'll get set free, I'll open that gate, and they'll stand there and look at me and go, what, you want us to go out now? And then I'll get a head and dog behind them and push them out, and they will run. They'll be like, we're free, although the whole way through winter when I open this gate, I'm always worried they're going to get out, all they want's food. They'll walk to the back of the tractor, and they'll start eating the bale with the gate open. Because it doesn't look that nice in there, but to be fair, they've got a nice dry area all the way along there. They've got water, they've got food. Um, I guess that's all they really want. But anyway, we've run out of the big squares in the tube, and this is a real first world problem.
these bloody things. So we're all big on trying to reduce our plastic usage at the moment. Um, these bales, the baler puts a layer of film wrap on them, I think it's four layers. And then the wrapper puts only two layers on that way and then gets six layers or eight layers that might be on the flats. Just the nature of the wrapper, the way they work. Um, yeah, what, what used to happen is you put net wrap on them, which is horrible stuff, and then you put six layers on there and then you get 24 layers on there, which is not needed. The only reason you get the 24 layers on that flat end is the way the wrapper works. So we're, we're a lot less plastic in there because we've used the, the film in the baler. Problem is, I can't open the bale down where it's stored and leave the plastic there and bring it up because the film is holding the bale together. Now, you go from cutting a tube open, just, just one slice down the top and down either side of the bale, folding it out, taking the bale out, then you put the sides back in, roll it up, beautiful. You get 30, 40, 50 bales in a roll. Tiny wee roll of plastic is great. Tube rep uses a lot less plastic too. Um, to these things. You gotta, because they're stored on their ends, so you gotta roll them on their sides, pick them up, they often don't ride very well. Um, bring them up here, put it in the feeder in there, then cut the plastic off. So I'm gonna cut the bottoms off these now. And the idea being when I put the bale on the ground, there's no bottom on it, cut the side, lift it up, roll it up in a ball, jam it in the ladder on the tractor. Where are we? About there, so I can't even get it there somewhere. Um, and go home and then stick it in the bin. In the, the when I say bin, the bin for collection. Um, we, it does get recycled. But, yeah, first world problems. Life is hell because of this. And there you have some very happy cattle. Not that they were uh, very hungry to begin with because I've put those bales on top of other feed. But yeah, so this is what they've been wanted on. Um, big trees, massive trees. They're about 150 odd years old, these things, a lot of them. They're huge. Right on top of a hill. Um, no water really drains into here or drains away from this point. Used to be a house up here many years ago. You can see it's not very nice out there where I've had to drive the tractor. I had a bale over there for the first half of winter, but uh, I think what will happen next year, I'm just going to do this whole area about 10 or 15 metres out in rock, and because we're going to put 60 calves or R1s up here next year, and then I think this area here, we'll put some bark chips out there. Not a huge amount, but um, yeah, put, I don't know, see what it costs, but get three or four truckloads. They've got to strip the other side of the trees there as well, which is very dry like better than this even. But down there where that fella's sitting down, all nice and comfy. So there's plenty of room for them to lie down. And like I say, that won't be that bad if I don't drive a tractor in there that weighs seven tons. Yeah, but yeah, the idea would be bale feeders, just one, two, three, four, probably put the trough down that end somewhere on some rock, hoping to have a water scheme in at the very least start and have a big tank out there on top of the hill. Um, yeah, and then that way, the tractor doesn't come in here, the bales just get put over the fence into the feeder. And with four feeders for 60 R1s, they've got all day to eat. It's only, well it's only going to be 50 I think. Um, so there's only going to be like 12 or 13 around each feeder, and they've got all day to eat. So I think it'll be good. Yeah, but they're not looking too bad these things. They are two year olds, and they shouldn't still be here. They should have been burgers and patties and steaks by now, but... Uh, that was last season. First season in 10 years. We haven't finished all our cattle before the second winter. Whoa, buddy. Don't touch that wire. Electric fence here is all that keeps them in. They're pretty tolerant of it, pretty obedient. Yeah, they waste a bit of feed here, but ugh, I'm not worried about it. Another thing with having them up here, sir, so I'm just done with cattle on crop. I've never really liked cattle on crop. Sheep on crop, I think, is great. Um, you can feed your sheep properly, plus you can bring the outcomes at the other end for lambing time that, that mean far better results for the wee lambies, both financially and welfare-wise. Um, cattle, I just, here on this farm I struggle with it. We do get quite a bit of rain over winter, we have heavy soils. It's not for me, I'm not saying no one should do it, I just, I don't like it. So this is my solution for wintering cattle from now on. It will cost more, because baleage is not cheap compared to Swedes. Um, we're thinking about maybe getting a bucket, uh, oh, it's a quarter beet bucket, got a whole lot of wee wires and stuff in the bottom, all bits of, just had to have a wee clean up my phone, I ran out of recording time, but uh, where were we? Yeah, um, it's going to cost more, um, we're looking at that beet bucket, so it just sort of goes in underneath the Swedes, 
and you fill it up and lift it up and you've got a bucket full of sweets it's it's a cheap way if you're harvesting a small amount um, but it's still quite an expensive process and I think it'll add up to be far more expensive than baleage so we're just going to plan on making enough baleage this coming summer it's about 150 bales extra so one of these guys up here um, and yeah we'll have that extra bit of crop available for sheep in future once these regulations are all set we might look at going back to 16 or 17 hectares but uh, we are going to be restricted as to what we can plant by the looks of it on what we have in the past so I won't be backing off our area until that point we might put a little bit less fruit on maybe but i don't know that that's giving us our yields i think i think the place just a long time since we've done any cropping i think it's just getting yields mainly because of that um yeah but anyway that's that's the plan